Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. I know I've been doing a lot of VEX VR and virtual online robotics uh, videos, but right now, just the way everything's going on with schools not being open and you know everybody's teaching robotics online, I just thought I would be giving a lot of resources and ideas for those of you that are teaching robotics. So today's video is going to basically show you specifically some activities you could be giving your robotics students. So if you want to see that, stay with me. So I just didn't want to give you guys a website of the VEX VR and say, here, go ahead, go for it, try to figure this all out. I've been um, on this already for two weeks. So what I'm going to do in this video is basically just show you some things I've learned, some things that my students have learned about VEX VR, and then just give you guys some options and some possibilities for students to do some um, of these activities. So what I'm going to do is basically take you to VEX VR and just show you some activities that my students have been doing. And I'm also going to share you with you the rubric that I basically give my students so they know exactly what they're going to need to do for a certain grade. So let's go to VEX VR. Okay, everybody, I'm on the vr.vex.com website here. And so let's go ahead and start with the first activity or project that I had my students do. Um, I had them do the dynamic wall maze. Um, you can have them do the regular wall maze, it's fine. So I basically had them choose a maze. It didn't matter to me which one they chose. Yes, there are some that are more difficult than others, but you know, I'm not gonna put any type of benefit for choosing a hard one. And then they go ahead and they make their robot go from the start here to the finish. As, as long as they touch the checkerboard um, finish, then I basically tell them that their project is done. So they would program their forwards and turns so that the robot can get to that end. Um, let me go ahead now and go to the rubric for that. Okay, everybody. So the rubric for the wall maze, um, I, our school has standards based grading. So we don't do A, B, C, F. We're, we have exceeds met or meet, nearly meet, unmet, at no evidence. So um, for the wall maze, my students will get an exceeds if their robot travels from start to checkerboard finish with clean maneuvers. And clean maneuvers um, means the robot's not going to scrape against the wall. It's just going to perfectly go through the maze and not hit anything. Uh, they will get a meet if their robot travels from start to checkerboard finish with mostly clean maneuvers. So if the robot hits um, you know, the side of the maze, but they still make it to the end, they will get a meet. Uh, nearly met, the robot travels from start and completes 50 to 99% of the maze. So if they go past halfway, they'll get a nearly nearly met. Um, my, my thinking is if they can get, you know, to halfway, they should be able to finish. So it's just one of those things where um, I'm going to leave it up to the student to decide how far they go. Uh, for an unmet, the robot travels from start and completes less than 50% of the maze. And uh, no evidence, the robot program is never submitted. I never get the file. The student never communicates to me, you know, to have me watch their program. So, you know, for those of you that have A, B, C, D, or F grades, you guys can, you know, just substitute those in for these. Okay, now let's go ahead and switch over to the next activity that I gave them is the Castle Crasher. So on this one here, there are basically blocks that are set up on the table for the robot to knock over. That's why this is called Castle Crasher. So I tell my students to go into this 3D mode so they're able to actually see and be able to count the amount of blocks that they knock over. So they uh, basically will program their robots with the same forward and turns that they use for their maze. And they can choose to also change the degrees if they want to go diagonal. So let's say that they first knock over this and they need to make sure that the robot does not go off the table. 
So let's say they knock over this building right here. They can make their degrees different to go to the middle. But I tell them, you know, just advice wise um, to knock over these buildings. Um, it's better to knock them over either vertically or horizontally, because if they knock them over at an angle here, they're going to have a tough time with that. Now, I know what some of you are asking. You're saying, you know, uh, do you have them use sensors? Just because we're starting the school year off and I just want them to get an understanding of their forwards and reverse and left and right, I don't give them um, using sensors as an option, but it is an option for those of you that would, you know, further your students' knowledge about programming. But for the moment, I'm just having them use their forwards and their turns uh, to knock over these buildings. Now, the one kickback I'm getting from my students is, Miss Gino, this is really hard. These buildings don't fall over the same time or the same way every time. And I tell them, you're right. And it's like regular blocks. I can knock over something with a real robot, and it's not going to always fall the same. So I try to get them to understand the way you hit it is going to be different. The one big tip I did give them, I said, look at the size of this robot. And I said, look at the size of this building right here. I said, if you try to ram right into this building right here, you're going to basically split this building in two. You're going to knock this side, the right side to the right. You're going to knock the left over to the left. You're going to basically just cause a whole lot of carnage right here. But I did say, look at this robot. Look, at that. look how it's the same size as one of these columns. So I said, don't try to eat the whole hamburger at once. I said, don't try to knock this whole thing off in one, in one piece because it's not going to do that. So I said, try, knock, try knocking off just this column and then come back for this. And the same thing for up here. If I can give you that view, um, it's the same setup as this right here. It's just not as tall. But I said, don't try to knock this whole thing over at once because you're basically just going to spread it out. Try knocking over just this column here and then back up and then try to knock over that column. So if your students are giving you some kickback on this is hard, these don't fall the right way, have them try to divide and conquer. Try to have them just concentrate on sections. And then now let me go ahead and go to the rubric um, for that. Okay, this is my rubric for the Castle Crasher. Um, you know, obviously you can adjust this for the ability level of your students, but I was questioning, um, you know, my perfection expectations and these students can do um, more than I think we give them credit for. So our, our school does standards-based grading. So, you know, if you're doing A, B, C, I think this can line up also with yours. Uh, but to get an exceeds, my students need to knock off all 27 objects off the table. For a met, knock off 22 to 26 objects off the table. Nearly met, 15 to 21 objects off the table. Unmet, knock off 1 to 14 objects off the table. And our school actually has a no evidence where, you know, it's kind of like a student not turning in anything. It's kind of hard to grade them if they never turn it in. So if I never watch the robot, they never send me a file, then it just gets a no evidence where I can't grade anything that I never see. So that would be zero objects. And then after Castle Crasher, I'm going to have my students go to letter writing. So let me show you how you're going to do that. And um, you can choose to utilize um, whatever blocks you think are necessary on this one here. But I'm just having them draw initials. And I'll show you when I show you my rubric which letters they have to choose from. But if you're just wondering how to draw with your robot, you just uh, bring up in the purple section here for looks. Um, set print color and you can decide which color the robots gonna draw in but I'll just leave it black and then you're going to have your uh, move robot pen and then leave it for down because we want this to draw unless you're gonna have your robot go somewhere else if you're gonna have your robot come over here then definitely have it up until you're ready to draw and then we just go back here and now my students can you know, they can start to program their robot to draw 
whatever letter choice that they chose. So if we hit the play button, and, oh, that's my bad. I forgot to have it turn right for a certain, okay. And the beauty about this is we can refresh, and unlike the maze, it'll, you know, we don't have to scroll through a bunch of mazes. Okay, so that's how you basically draw with your robot for uh, VEX VR here. And now let me go ahead and go to the letters that they have to choose from and then the rubric for this project. Okay, for the VEX VR robot letter writing, the objective is to have your robot on VEX VR, the art canvas mode, write two letters as legible as possible. So here are their letter choices, the A, E, F, H, K, M, N, V, W, X, Y, or Z. So if you notice, I took off all the letters that um, have curves in it. Um, at this point, they, you know, with VEX VR, they can't do a curve. So I'm just having them concentrate on these capital letters where you can just tell that they have straight lines. Um, you, know, you can see with the A and the V and the X, they're going to have to and the Y, they're going to have to um, manipulate their degrees for their turns so that, you know, it's not going to be this perfect vertical or horizontal line. So they'll have to do a little bit more work for those letters. And then they will send in two separate letters to me, either letting me watch it or through a VEX VR file. Let's go ahead and go to the rubric for this. Um, exceeds, and again, I'm doing standards-based grading, so, you know, if this is your A, that's fine. Um, both letters are written perfectly with clean lines and symmetrical. So what I mean by symmetrical is, you know, if you take the letter A, if I take the left side of the A and flip it right over on the right side, it should perfectly match up. So I'm, I'm basically on that one looking for, like, the length of the line. Um, you just don't want an A where the left the left um, line that's coming down vertical, sorry, yeah, vertically is just. I don't want to make. I don't want it to be looking longer than the than the right side. So symmetrical just means they just went the perfect distance on both sides of the letter. Um, a met would be one letter might have one side that is different than the other or have imperfections. So I'm just looking for clean lines and, you know, if something's not clean, something's longer than something else, then that's where they would get a met. Uh, nearly met, letters are legible but clumsy or lines don't match. So, you know, if the line doesn't quite meet up, you know, if they're doing the A and there's a gap between the lines, then they would, they would be in the nearly met section. Um, unmet letters are legible but many imperfections or one letter completed so if they do one letter and not the other letter then they're they're on the in unmet and like the uh, other projects if they just don't turn it in or not attempted then it just gets a no evidence okay everybody so those are the first three projects that I'm having my robotic students work on for or from VEX VR um, so the big problem, or not problem, but just obstacle you're going to have is how do my students prove or, you know, basically show that they have skilled and mastered um, these projects. So one of the ways is working really good for me is um, in Google Meet, there's a presentation part where my students can show me their screen. So I basically just watch their program. I've, I've just found that that's faster than them sending me the VEX VR files. But however is, you know, works better for you and your students, it should be the way you go. But try to give them just many options at this time, because right now, you know, with students on different devices and their connection issues, you know, just be patient and just offer them as many opportunities as they can to share these with you. I actually had a student take a video of their screen and then send it to me as a video file. I mean, I'm like, you know, as long as I get your, your files and your work, I'm good. So. We're just gonna to have to be a little flexible because this is a definite time where we have to be flexible. So what I'm gonna, you know, the next item now is when we're gonna go with VEX VR is just try to up the level now of their programming. So this is basically just to get their programming, you know, their maneuvering down and then we'll start to work on sensors as they start to get better. But that's another day, another video. 
Okay, guys, I am Mr. Hino from Missing Zaga Robotics. I'm out. He's out. He's out. We got this. We got this. We got this, guys. Hey guys, Mr. Hino here. Thank you so much for watching. And if you love robotics, don't forget to check out these videos also because they're cool. Okay, guys, take care.